Greetings, I'm the dentist. Welcome back to Dent Agenda. This is Chapter 3, Pediatric Dentistry. This will be an introduction to the dental trauma that will be discussed in detail in the upcoming tutorials in this chapter. These are the points included in this tutorial. To start with, note that before you check the teeth, if there is evidence of head injury, transfer the patient to the hospital immediately. Usually, by 12 years of age, 33% of boys and 19% of girls have experienced at least one episode of dental trauma. But the prognosis is often good with immediate treatment, therefore see the patient as soon as possible. Also, avulsed permanent teeth should be replanted immediately without attempting to remove the tissues around the root. And in case of any dirt, use saline solution to rinse it away. And that will be discussed later on in details. In case of dental trauma, the child and parents may be upset and anxious. Therefore, handle the situation accordingly and delay any non-urgent treatments to the upcoming visits. Don't forget to take good notes for future reference and medical legal purposes. Last but not least, clinical photos would be beneficial at this stage as a documentation. Points to consider while taking the history. Take a structured history as an aid memoir and for medical legal purposes. In case of loss of consciousness, concussion, headache and vomiting, there is a high probability of head injury, so refer immediately to the hospital. Also, consider consent issues with who accompany the child before you commence the treatment. Ask the following questions. When? To know the time interval between injury and treatment, since it affects their prognosis, the sooner the better. Ask where. To know if the patient need a tetanus booster dose, in case of contaminated wants. If so, refer to a hospital. Ask how. Be alert to the possibilities of other injuries and child abuse. Check the broken tooth fragments. These may have been inhaled or embedded in soft tissues as the lips. If the tooth fragment or whole tooth not accounted for and or in case of loss of consciousness, a chest x-ray is mandatory to check if it was inhaled. Past dental history, since previous trauma may affect prognosis and cooperation in the dental settings. Past medical history. Check for bleeding disorders and allergies to penicillin. Ask about immunosuppression. This may impact your decision on whether to reimplant a tooth or not, as the body may reject it. The aim of the treatment and why we handle dental trauma. Well, we do so in primary dentition to preserve the integrity of the underlying permanent successor tooth and to preserve the primary tooth until its natural time of exfoliation, if cooperation is good. In the secondary dentition, however, we do so to preserve the vitality of the tooth to allow root maturation and we must restore the crown to prevent drifting and tilting of the adjacent teeth and prevent over eruption of the opposing teeth. Now your point of focus 
what should you focus on in the emergency treatment? Elimination of pain is the main aim, also to protect the pulp. Reduction and immobilization of mobile teeth. Suturing of soft tissue lacerations. If intraorally, use 3-0 resorbable suture and if extraorally, refer to a hospital. Assess the need to prescribe any antibiotics or analgesics and the use of chlorhexidine mouthwash. Now to the intermediate intervention. What does it include? It includes two things. Number one, pulp therapy, either for primary dentition, which was explained in detail in previous tutorials, or for permanent dentition, and in that case, it depends on the stage of root growth. Number two, consider orthodontic requirements and long-term prognosis of damaged teeth. Semi-permanent treatment. In this stage, you should consider semi-permanent restorations, either fillings as glass and cements or reinforced glass and cements, or covering restorations as PMMA. Keep the patient under review at intervals of one month, three months, and six months for two years to review their prognosis. Last but not least, the permanent treatment. This stage is usually postponed until the patient is over the age of 16 years to allow pulpal and gingival recession and the likelihood of father trauma. At that time, the definitive treatment could be a final crown or even an implant if needed. Classification of dental injuries. Several injury classifications exist. Some use Roman numerals, and other classifications describe the injuries using the WHO system, which classify the dental injuries to complicated and uncomplicated. Complicated injuries means that the pulp is exposed, and uncomplicated injuries means that the pulp is intact. Trying to avoid the problem is always better than trying to solve it. So how can we prevent children from encountering dental trauma? Well, know that the prevalence of dental trauma increases as the overjet increase, like in cases of more than 9 mm overjet, the prevalence of dental trauma doubles. A mouth guard for sports, which is the vacuum formed thermoplastic vinyl best triple thickness is mandatory. Now let's learn some points about safeguarding the children. All professionals involved with children need to be aware of the principles of safeguarding and alert to the possibilities of child abuse or neglect. Note that the term child abuse is now favoured over non-accidental injury. The following signs are associated with child abuse. Usually, younger children are involved. Their presenting injuries may not match the parent's account of how they were sustained. Delay attending at a surgery or clinic for treatment of the injury. Bruises or injuries of different times are found on examination. Ear pinches and frenal tears in children below the age of one year are highly suspicious. 50% of abused children will have signs on the head and or the neck.
take a careful history and keep full records. Discuss concerns with an experienced or trusted colleague and decide if further action or referral is justified. Provide any urgent or emergency dental care. Talk to child and parents. Tactfully explain your concerns, seeking consent to sharing of information. Rarely, if you feel informing the parents or carers may put the child or others, including yourself, at risk, you may still share the information and or refer if you believe it is in the child's best interests to do so. Make sure to arrange review with child and parents before they leave the appointment. Sources where you can get help from Child protection nurse Local consultant pediatrician Social service Child's health visitor And your defence organisation And there you have all the points And don't forget to check the upcoming tutorials to learn how to manage each case of dental trauma in details Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.